This week I read Haruki Murakami's brand new book and it really got me thinking about just how much I love weird books. Just weird shit. Parallel universes, maybe slipping in and out of universes, maybe you don't know which is which or who's real, who's not real. Stuff like that. When you don't know what reality is or who's telling the truth or if where you are even exists at all. I love that shit. And today I've got a few recommendations for you if you like it too. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you just want to try and get into it. Dip your toes in the weird pool. That's fine too. Either way, I have five books I want to talk about today. Five recommendations of weird books that I think are really worth your time. These books are in order from the least weird to the most weird. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start today's video off with Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. And this is... I don't know if it's so much weird as in, I, I, I thought it was weird. Okay, so this is, the author sold this as kind of like the African Game of Thrones, but I don't feel like it was that at all. It is a fantasy novel that he set in Africa, kind of like Game of Thrones, all fantasy novels takes place in this essentially like fictionalized Europe, and then they have these different stories play out in various versions of a fictionalized Europe. This guy said, well, what if we did a fictionalized version of Africa? And then we set our fantasy world in there and kind of based it off of the myths and legends and old stories of Africa and not Europe. And then he went from there and it is very magical. It's very transportative, if that is a word. It really transports you into the world of this, the feeling of this. The, the, the language that he uses is extremely just vibrant and descriptive, and it really makes you feel like you are in this world. I don't know how accurate it is. I have no idea. I, I, don't, I don't know if the myths that he's trying to portray here are actual myths or if he just made them up. I, I don't know how accurate to actual African history this is, so don't uh, don't ask me. But I will say that it feels authentic and it feels genuine while you're in there. The writing is just a little bit dense and a little bit complicated at times. Not that it's like flowery. Well, it is kind of flowery. I don't even know. I got to the end of this book and I wasn't even sure what the hell happened. And now that I'm about two years out from reading it, I really couldn't tell you what happened. I do. I mean, it is about a man. His name is Tracker. He is a tracker and he's trying to find this little boy that went missing. He has this relationship with a man named Leopard. He's also a storyteller, and being a storyteller, he might be lying, or at the very least, twisting the truth in order for it to look the best in his favor. Due to the fact that this story is actually the at age old trope of him being in prison, and he is being interrogated, and he's relaying this story to somebody else. Either way, like I said, it's just wild. The, the imagery, the language, everything about it's just super trippy. It's for the most part a straightforward story. There's no weird extra parallel sh happening, but it was just so weird and so different and so unique. I have to put it on a list of weird books, even though I don't know if it's necessarily intentionally weird, if that makes any sense. Next up is the Wayward Pines Trilogy by Blake Crouch. Now, I will say, me and Blake Crouch kind of have a love-hate relationship here. He is, some of his books I think are absolutely wonderful and I really enjoy them. Some of his books I really did not enjoy. So he's kind of hit or miss with me, but this was a hit. Now, Wayward Pines is a man wakes up in a strange town. He doesn't know who he is and he doesn't know how he got there. And the, there's something really strange about this town. Everything's just a little bit off. Then there's a wall around the town that no one is allowed to leave this town. But is the wall there to keep the people in or is the wall there to keep something else out? We're not really sure. Like I said, everything about the town's a little bit weird. When he goes down the sidewalks, he constantly hears these weird crickets in the grass until the point where finally he goes to investigate these crickets to go find one of these noisy little bastards and he doesn't find a cricket 
All he finds is a little speaker buried in the grass, making the sound of a cricket. It's just, and this, I mean, this is the intro to the video. You're like, what the hell is even happening in this town? It's great. It's really a lot of fun. The mysteries are a lot of fun. The reveals are a lot of fun. I really genuinely enjoyed this. It's also a television show that's quite good from what I understand. I actually haven't watched it. I just hear that it's very good. So if you like the TV show, you probably like the books. I don't know. I can say I thought these were great. I really, and it's, it is a trilogy. Actually, you know what? I feel like this might've been better as one just really big book, like a thousand page book, Wayward Pines. I think that would have been great. I kind of how I read it anyway. Like if I was buying these as individual books as they came out, I probably would have, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. What are we even talking about here? Anyway, great stuff. Wayward Pines. Go check it out. Blake Crouch. Next up, and I know I said five books here because this is another trilogy, so it's actually closer to nine, but we're going to talk about it as it's the single book. Actually, the one I have is a single book, and it is the Southern Reach Trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. And this is, the first book of this is Annihilation, and Annihilation was made into that Netflix movie, Annihilation, with Natalie Portman or somebody like that. And fabulous movie fabulous book actually the whole trilogy is wonderful but this is like a very strange weird zone something came down from outer space and it landed on the ground when it landed on the ground it created this weird zone around it everyone who goes into this zone does not come back out and if they do come back out they come back out different somehow i want to say we are on like the 13th expedition now and we send our main character a biologist who actually has no name other than the biologist into the zone with her crew and we follow them in there and there's weird plants and there's weird animals and the zone takes over living organisms and it kind of changes them it's everything about it's very strange then there's this lighthouse and then there's a tower and we need to figure out what the correlation between the lighthouse and the tower is what this weird alien artifact is and so on and so on it is wildly imaginative it is just trippy as hell it's wonderful it's really good i would say that the first book and the second book are just fabulous the third book i feel like was the weakest of the trilogy but i would not say that because that book was weaker than the other two that you shouldn't read it i still think it's an excellent trilogy i think it's an excellent story actually i think this month the fourth book might have been released um or was it is it next month? It's coming out sometime around this time. <laughs> you know, it might not be out yet. I'll have to look into it because I really, um, I'm quite interested in to see, because it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be a four book series. I think he just decided recently that he thinks he has more to say about this story or more to tell about the zone. I'm fine with that. I'll check it out. I thought this was really good. Anyway, Southern Reach Trilogy. I keep wanting to call it the Area X Trilogy. The Southern Reach Trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. Next up is a book by the actual man who inspired this whole list, Haruki Murakami, and it is The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle. Actually, if we are going by, like, weird factor, I would say Kafka on the Shore is probably the weirdest of all of them, but I just put that on a video, like, last week or the week before, uh, forever talking about that book. And you know what? Let's give some love to another one. Actually, this is one of my favorites of his is the wind up bird chronicle just wonderfully weird like everything haruki murakami but murakami's more like his weirdness is more like you feel like you're walking through a dream everything's so odd and dreamlike everything's just a little bit weird everything's just a little bit off people talk a little bit strange people act a little bit strange and the whole premise of this one is the guy's cat goes missing and his wife wants it found so he goes out looking for his lost cat he ends up running into this strange neighbor girl who was watching him from up in her room like she's like this 15 year old girl one of the weirdest quirkiest characters in the entire book she's gonna point him towards this empty vacant lot that's on the block he goes to the vacant lot and he finds a well down inside the well if you go climb down into it you'll find a doorway to another dimension or a parallel universe where everything's even weirder over there then at a certain point in the story his wife goes up missing and now that she's missing he 
goes and talks to people and people claim that they know where she is, but he can't see her and he can't speak to her, but she's with this other person. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But he can't confirm that what these people are telling him is true or not. He can only take what they're saying at face value because he has no way of seeing or speaking with her. But it's okay because we told you where she is. Don't look into it any further. In the meantime, we still haven't found the missing cat. Like, it's just... So between this world and the parallel world in the bottom of that well, we might just figure out exactly what's happening in this weird world and what exactly is going on. It's just wonderful. And it's just, I don't know. It's, there's, a, there's a magic to Haruki Murakami's writing. There's a way that he kind of really puts you in this feeling of everything's a little bit uneasy. Nothing feels right. Nothing feels real when you're reading a Murakami book and you you buy it when these people, especially like the little girl from across the street, just acts so weird and says shit and just it's just so nothing is right about her. You buy into it because nothing's right about anything. Nothing's right about the world in, t in general. And then you're traveling between multiple worlds, none of which feel like they're the real world. It's just like I said, it's like walking through a dream in the best way possible. And last but not least, The Three Stigmata of Paul Eldritch by Philip K. Dick. This is the wildest book that I've read from him, probably. I don't know. This he, All of his books are completely insane. Actually, I could have made this list entirely made up of Philip K. Dick and Haruki Murakami books and made it like 20 books long. It Like the amount of insanity that happens in one of Either one of those authors' books is completely out of this world. But The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch is maybe one of my favorites of his and maybe the wildest, but it is a Martian colony, these group of Martians in a colony, and they it's miserable up there. The day-to-day -day life and grind of living in a Martian colony is tedious and awful. So they create these tabletop Barbie lands inside of their little pods that they live in and they deck them out and they have the little Barbies that move around in them and the little houses and everything like that and it's designed to be kind of quasi like their colony that they live in then they take a drug and the drug is called candy and when they take the drug they transport their consciousness down into this Barbie land and they live out an ideal life in Barbie land then one day Palmer Eldritch comes back from another galaxy carrying a new drug that he found over there called Choosy. And this drug won't transport you into your Barbie land that you created. This drug transports you to a whole nother reality, an entirely new universe in a new dimension. And there are, there are aliens and there's, I mean, we're in and out of Barbie land, the real world, this other world. I mean, it is wild you it's hard to keep track of at times exactly where you're at and when you're there and how you're there because he might flip flop back and forth with very little warning that you're going to be transported to another place like just be on your toes when you're reading a philip k dick book especially this one you might very quickly find yourself in a very different location and kind of kind of question exactly why you're there how you're there how you got there what the fuck's even happening anyway just wonderful. Absolute blast. I couldn't have more fun than with something like a three stigmata Palmer Eldritch. Go check it out. Go check out any of the weird books here. If you have a just a wild, weird, trippy book, throw it in the comments. Because like I said at the beginning of this video, those are some of my favorites. And if I could get some recommendations from you guys, I would absolutely love it. Probably go buy them and read them. I just, you know, it's just who I am. As always, everybody, the link for my Patreon's in the description below. The link for my Discord's in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.